this video, we'll cover two topics. First, what careers are good for people who start? How to find the job that is right for you? And second, how to prepare for a job interview? Like it's happening tomorrow, what do I do? And I hear these questions very frequently. I see them over and over in the stuttering support groups. And yes, it's crucial to prepare to set yourself right for the job interview. So stay tuned. How to choose a career. So what careers are good for people who stutter? The first thing that comes to our mind, probably the ones that involve less speaking, like a nurse or a software developer. And on the one hand, it makes total sense. On the other hand, I want you to think about exceptions to this realistic thinking. For example, you want to do voiceovers and you go thinking, voiceovers, of, of course, no way. Yet, let's take a look at James Earl Jones. He used to have a severe stutter and he still to this day calls himself an inarticulate man. Yet, he's one of the most recognizable voices. He was waiting. Mr. Jones. <laughs> David, how are you? What an honor. James Earl Jones, whose voice is legendary. No, I am your father. Listen to this behind the scenes Action. moment, the voice of the actor who actually wore the Darth Vader suit. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. Then listen to James Earl Jones. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. Or maybe you say, I want to do politics. But then you go thinking, oh, no, 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 politics. It's all about public speaking, being on stage, no why. But what about Joe Biden? What about Winston Churchill? What about Thomas Jefferson? They are people who stuttered, or stutter, and the presidents, the prime minister. Or maybe you want to perform, be a performer, or to run a TV show, and you go like, what? Please take Ed Sheeran. He's a person who stuttered. He's one of the most popular singers these days. Take a look at Steve Harvey. He used to stutter, but stuttering didn't stop him from pursuing his dream of being on TV screen. And the list goes on and on and on. Like scientists like Isaac Newton, sportsmen like Tiger Woods, actors and actresses like Emily Blunt, and Bruce Willis. I have a separate video on that. There are so many famous people who stuttered, but they managed to reach their goals, their dreams, despite stuttering. You see, thinking realistically puts you in a box and everything outside that box is impossible. No, 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 no. Even though you haven't been there, you haven't tried. Thinking realistically, it's quitting even before you start. You don't give yourself this possibility. You don't give yourself a chance. I can't do that. I can't do this. Everything around you is I can't. Only the box that you are in, that's what I can. This realistic thinking is a very dangerous thinking pattern for people who stir because in reality, it puts us in a box of fear, a box of holding back, a box of tension, physical and emotional tension. Deep down inside, all of us, each of us, you included, we all want to open up and express ourselves. And as long as we're holding back this natural, desire to be alive, to be active, to truly express yourself. It creates a lot of physical and emotional tension. And this physical emotional tension, that's that state of stuttering that amplifies stuttering, that makes it 100 times bigger and stronger. We all want to feel alive and being alive means pursuing something challenging, doing something challenging. A river flows to the unknown, a swamp, stays the same and honestly it stinks. And yes, going outside that box of realistic thinking 
does feel like danger, does feel like risk, risk of failure, risk of stuttering. And in this regard, the question for you is, do you feel like stuttering is a failure? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not as bad as it feels to you. And I have a separate video on stuttering not being bad. And we want to revisit our relationship with stuttering. As you're choosing your career, as you're preparing for a job interview, you want to feel sense and have a proper vision of that relationship with your stuttering. So when people ask, when you go asking yourself this question, what is a good career for a person who stutters like me? The real question behind that is, can I do it? Can I do what I want to do? And subconsciously, of course, we want a permission. Somebody giving us that permission. Yes, you can do it. Go for it. As Henry Ford said once, the answer to this question, can I do it? Can I do it? Whether you think you can or you think you can't, in both cases, you're right. I'll go even further than Henry Ford and I'll go deeper into that. I want to give a little more guidance to you. The truth is you can't as long as you don't like it. That's the key to true real change. James Earl Jones became one of the most recognizable voices, not because he persevered, sacrificed or desensitized himself to stuttering or learned some magic technique. He simply liked what he did. He loved it. He wanted to do it. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. So what is it that you like doing? And it's great to have a role model or role models. For example, when I was in high school, I watched this TV show, Santa Barbara, and there was a lawyer called Mason. So I don't know why it just clicked in me. I just said, I want to be like that guy. So I decided that I want to be a lawyer, even though so many people told me, you know, with stuttering, you cannot do it. There's just no why. A much better question than can I do it? Can I do it? What is a good career for me is how can I do it? How can I do what I want to do? It automatically puts you into a position of finding a why. But there is even better question than how. There is a book called who not how I highly recommend it. It's it's just awesome. And the idea of the book in the nutshell is that you can be the smartest person in the world, but your resources are limited and you can spend your whole lifetime figuring out the why. But it's a thousand times more efficient and effective to find someone who's been there, who has solved this problem and who can teach you to do the same. Think about Apple, Google, Amazon, Tesla. Steve Jobs was smart man, right? But it's all about the team. Apple is a team. Elon Musk is a smart guy, but Tesla is a team. So hire someone on your team. Don't think you're smarter than Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. Ask a question, who can help me with that right now? And maybe you can find someone around. So if you really dream about becoming a nurse or a software developer, beautiful choice, awesome. But if you think about choosing a career based on your realistic thinking, what is realistic? For me, you're putting yourself into a prison and it's not cool to live in a prison provided that you haven't committed a crime it's self-imposed sentence so pick something you truly like and go for it so you chose what you want what you like you went for it you worked for it and now they invited you 
to the job interview. It's happening tomorrow. Congratulations. Now we need to prepare for a job interview. Let's move to the next section of the video. How to prepare for the job interview. You want to start with value mindset. The truth is, anxiety comes up when you don't quite feel your value. It's when you don't truly feel you're a great fit for this position. So to feel the confidence, you want to feel that you do bring value. So it's your internal work, the first exercise to get in touch with your value. Nobody cares about your resume. All they care is what you can do for them. And what you can do comes down to your skills and your desire. And actually the skills also heavily depend on your desire and commitment. If you want it, if you like it, if you really enjoy it, then the skills will follow. You will learn them fast, you will develop them further. So first of all, you want to demonstrate your desire and commitment to solve problems. As an exercise, as an assignment, write down all the achievements that come to your mind, big and small ones. Give yourself time, come up with your ability, demonstrating your ability to solve problems. And even if you don't have much, maybe you don't have previous experience, still write down what you can and want to do. That's how I got my first job. I didn't have any experience. So when I was asked the question, like, did you do it before? Can you do it? I said, of course I can do it. Again, the desire, your desire is your true value. So get in touch with that desire and show, demonstrate how committed you are. Disclosure. There are two types of disclosure. And if you're a person who stutters, probably you'll end up doing one of them. The first one is what I call active positive disclosure. It's when you're openly proactively disclose giving stuttering the exact meaning that you want to give to it. The second type of disclosure is what I call passive negative disclosure. It's when you don't disclose openly. Basically, you're trying to hide it, then it shows up and then you need to explain it. Yes, which one is better and which one I recommend? Of course, the first one. You want to be very clear about the fact that stuttering doesn't diminish or affect your skills, your desire, your commitment and ultimately your value. And if you're hiding it, then probably it does affect your skills, desire and value. Otherwise, why would you hide it? So in fact, you're well, lying and cheating, which is not a great thing to do. And it shows up in your actions because what happens, you're trying to do something and you can't, you're failing. By being open and proactive, you show your integrity. You show that you can follow through on your commitments. If you say, I'll do it, you do it. You truly prove through your actions that stuttering doesn't affect your ability to solve problems. So I want you to practice disclosure. If you have your stuttering coach, therapist, mentor, maybe career coach, do that with that person. If your job interview is tomorrow, you don't have time, hit live, go live in the Free From Stutter Facebook group and practice it there. And if you still have some time, you can also join the Free From Stutter Speaking Club and practice it face to face in a real group environment. You want to actually do it. That's one of the practices I do with my students for sure. It's better to do it once physically than do a thousand times talking to the mirror. Rejection is a filter. Now, what we're really afraid of is rejection. What if they reject me, they don't like me because of my stuttering? What if they just reject me because of something else. And yes, it can happen, but you want to go back to point one and two, get in touch with your value once again. And the truth is, we are going to get a bunch of no's. That's how life works, no matter if you stutter or not. What really matters is how you react 
to those no's. What meaning you attach to those no's. And there is only one right meaning. Rejection is a great thing because it's a filter. It's just a filter that gets you to the right people, to the right place and eventually to the right job. Rejection is a very, very healthy thing because without rejection on a job interview, there's a sure way you'll get to the wrong place, which is not a good thing. For example, one of my favorite assignments that I do with my students, one of the most important assignments is approaching strangers and asking them questions about stuttering. Just a couple questions. But guess what? This filter works there because you get no's. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Or excuse me, do you have a minute? No. Wow. You get one, two, five no's. But after that, the next yes you get gets you to a great connection. It's just magic how then you connect. You feel so much aligned with that person. And finally, you have a real, true, great conversation. Now, please imagine what if the first person was forced to say yes? What would happen? This person would go like, okay, come on, come on, say what you want to say, okay. Would you be happy with that conversation? Would you enjoy it? Would you like it? Of course, no. So prepare for the rejection. See rejection as a healthy and helpful tool. Experience, actually experience rejection and feel great about it and move on. Choose, explore and learn. Don't forget that you choose the same way as they choose. Get clear on your role, responsibilities, on other terms. Just feel that you have an active part in it. Please be sure that there are only two outcomes that you're going to have. The success, you succeed, yeah, you got a job. Or a lesson, and it's your job to see that lesson. And yeah, maybe, you're just not a great fit. But maybe there is something you can improve next time in your presentation. So see that as an exercise, as an assignment. And if you go like, oh no, I'm so scared, maybe I don't go there. Well, imagine that you've just paid $1,000 for, for the chance to participate in this show and this experience. How does that feel? Hmm, yeah, I've just paid 1000 bucks. Wow. Yeah, this must be valuable. Sure, I'll go for it. And in reality, it is that valuable. Even though I recommend practicing, we still, may, maybe you did, but we still learn mostly from these real life experiences. So see this simply as an assignment on your way to build your confidence. To sum up, Go with the value mindset. Disclose proactively. See rejection as a great thing. And see this whole thing as a great learning experience. And remember, you can still have this $1,000 experience for free. How cool is that? Thank you so much for watching. For more videos, subscribe to this YouTube channel. To go deeper into what you can do with stuttering, head over to freefromstutter.com and start with my free pro training and the 10 immediate steps I have for you. And for more interaction, join the Free From Stutter Facebook group. And I'll see you in the next video.